Um, I can stay a little bit above, uh, above, a uh, li little bit afterwards, uh, and then you can ask me more questions if you want. Okay. Does anyone have any questions from last time? So last time I think we ended here, right? Did we end here last time? We we started to talk about two indeterminate forms. One is infinity minus infinity. The other one is zero times infinity, right? And I explained to you why these two are indeterminate forms. That is, if I by looking at the uh, by looking at the limit form, I don't know what the limit is, right? So I have to do something to find the limit. So let's look at an example today. Uh, let's say I have uh, I have this limit here. So what's the limit form for this? Notice that as x goes to zero from the right, uh, what is happening to the first factor in the function? The first factor x is becoming zero. What is happening to the second factor? The second factor is log x, and we know that as x goes to zero from the right, log x is going to negative infinity. So that means that's an indeterminate form, right? So, uh, so uh, well, it, how would I tackle this problem then? Uh, the deal is we want to still apply L'Hopital's rule, but I cannot apply L'Hopital's rule if, if the form isn't zero over zero or infinity over infinity, right? So what should I do? Well, I pull out some trick from the algebra and try to ma manipulate the function so that uh, so that the limit form becomes zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So what algebraic trick I can do to this function, rewrite this function, so that the limit form, instead of zero times infinity, it becomes zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Am I making sense? Then I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So does anyone see what algebraic trick I can do here to rewrite the function so that I can apply L'Hopital's rule? What can I do? Yeah. Uh, ln of x cannot be written as 1 over x. Uh, what you, you could do here is that keep ln of x and then that x that you have, may I write that as can I write this as 1 over x in the denominator? Is that valid algebra? Everybody agrees? It's like saying 2 is the same as 1 over 1 over 2, right? 1 divided by half, that's 2, right? So what is 1 divided by 1 over x? That's x, right? Okay, so if you agree with that, now what's the limit form? Now the limit form is negative infinity for uh, ln of x. And notice that as x goes to 0 from the right, what is happening to 1 over x? It is becoming infinity, right? Uh, I should say, shouldn't say becoming infinity, it, 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 the, it uh, goes to infinity. Uh, Alright, so this is, uh, now I can apply L'Hopital's rule, so let me say LH. And then we are going to take the derivatives now. What's the derivative of ln? 1 over x. Uh, what's the derivative of 1 over x? Negative 1 over x squared. And so let's do some algebra now. The limit as x goes to 0 from the right. Uh, what am I getting here then, together? It, it simplifies to what? Negative x, very good. What am I getting then? Am I getting zero then? Okay, so the limit at the end becomes uh, zero in this case. Is everybody okay? Now, don't think that the, you're getting zero because you, are, you have zero times negative infinity, okay? I, another problem you'll see, there are, when you do your homework problems, you'll see similar problems where the limit won't be zero, it'll be something else, okay? All right, so that's uh, one. Uh, let's look at the next uh, next problem. Here I have uh, tangent x minus secant x. What's the limit form here? Uh, how many of you remember the limit of tangent as x goes to pi over two? 
As x goes to pi over 2, what's happening to tangent? Remember tangent is what? Tangent is sine over cosine, right? Tangent is sine over cosine. As the angle approaches pi over 2 from the left, what does it mean? Uh, it means that the angle x is like this, and uh, the angle is getting closer and closer to pi over 2. It's in the first quadrant though, right? I can assume x is in the first quadrant. So uh, as x gets closer and closer to pi over 2, what can you say about the denominator uh, or for the fraction sine over cosine? Yeah, it's get the, the denominator is becoming 0, but is it becoming 0 from the right, positive. And then sine x is becoming what? Sine x is becoming 1, right? So what do you have? You have a fraction where the numerator is becoming 1, the denominator is becoming 0 from the right, so ra the ratio will become what? Infinity, right? What is happening to secant? Well, secant is also becoming infinity in the similar. Why, why secant? Well, secant is what? 1 over cosine, right? So for the same reason, secant is becoming infinity as well, right? Is every, everybody clear? Alright, let me actually delete that. So we have uh, infinity minus infinity, that's the form. Uh, now, uh, I can take, uh, well, I cannot take, use uh, L'Hopital's rule yet. I have to somehow do some algebra and, and so that the form becomes 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. What did you do here? What algebra would you do here to get to the correct form so that you can use L'Hopital's rule? What algebra? Yeah. Very good. So this is. Uh, so what he's suggesting is, if you have no clue, what you, what do you do with the trig functions? You turn everything in terms of sine and cosine. So this would be one over cosine of x, and. And uh, how would you combine the two? So x is going to pi over two from the left. Uh, what is uh, what is this fraction? Is it sine x minus one over cosine x? Right. Okay. What's the limit form now? What is the uh, what is the limit form? Sine x pi over t or pi over two is what? 1, right? P sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so you get 0. And then what is cosine of pi over 2? 0 as well. So I, I have 0 over 0, so uh, may I apply L'Hopital's rule now? So I get the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the left. The derivative of sine is cosine. Uh, the derivative of cosine is sine. What's the limit form now? Oh, derivative of cosine is what? Negative sine. Uh, what's the limit form now? Cosine of pi over 2 is what? Cosine of pi over 2 is? 0. Sine pi over 2 is? 1. So is that indeterminate? No, it's determinant, right? The, the, lim the limit would be zero. Okay, so that's that. Now let's look at other indeterminate forms. There are, so maybe, let's say you are taking the limit of a function. The function has a base and an exponent, okay? So f of x is the base, g of x is the exponent. Uh, Suppose that the limit of the exponent is zero, the limit of the base is zero as well. If the limit of the base is zero, the limit of the exponent is zero, then what's the limit of, uh, of the, function, of the uh, function f to the g? Right? And that's an that's indeterminate form, zero to the zero. Another indeterminate form is when the base goes to one, the base goes to one, but the exponent goes to infinity. Okay, base goes to 1, the exponent goes to infinity. That's an indeterminate 
form as well. The last indeterminate form is infinity to the zero. That is, the base is going to infinity. Uh, the base is going to infinity, the exponent is going to zero. You guys have to be, go somewhere? Yeah, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. I figured that um, Okay, that's fine. Uh, f of x goes to infinity, g of x is going to zero. So that's an indeterm indeterminate form as well. So uh, what's the trick to handle these three indeterminate forms? What, what can we do to handle these three indeterminate forms? Well, the trick would be, uh, the trick to handle these three uh, indeterminate forms is that, is that the following. Uh, you are going to uh, rewrite the function f of x to the power g of x. Uh, f of x to the power g of x, you can rewrite it in terms of the uh, exponential function uh, e to the power g of, g of x ln of f of x, right? So remember, this is, uh, this is the very definition of the meaning of f to the g. f to the g is the same as e to the g times ln of f f to the g is the same as e to the g ln of f. Okay, and now, how can I find the limit then? Well, all I have to do is find the limit, all I have to do is find the limit of the exponent. If I find the limit of the exponent, what would be the original limit? If I find the limit of the exponent here, the original limit would be e to the power or whatever the limit of the exponent is, right? So what's the limit here? The limit here is e to the power limit of the exponent. So that's what we are going to do. Is, is everybody clear? So let me demonstrate that with an example here. Let's say I have uh, uh, x to the power x. Uh, notice what is x to the power x is. x to the power x is the same as e to the power x ln of x, right? e to the x ln of x. So, uh, now uh, we are going to take the limit of the exponent. So what's the limit as x goes to uh, 0 from the right of x times ln of x? Uh, did we work with this a few minutes ago? We, a few minutes ago we found this limit, right? By using the, uh, remember, uh, this problem here, right? We just did that problem. Limit as x goes to 0 from the right, x times ln of x, what is that? That limit came out to be 0, right? So I'm just going to say that you apply L'Hopital's rule. Uh, well, let me remind you what we did again. We, uh, we rewrote this uh, uh, function as ln x divided by 1 over x, and then we applied L'Hopital's rule dot 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 and finally we got the limit to be zero as we did before so then uh, if the limit of the exponent is zero then what's the original limit the limit of x to the x then is the limit of of e to the x ln of x and the limit of e to the x ln of x uh, it, the limit of the exponent is is zero so I get e to the zero which would be one then. So my final answer is, uh, my final answer is that the limit of x to the x is uh, one. It is, uh, is everybody uh, okay with, with that? Questions? Okay. All right. Um, let's look at, so this is the form 0 to the 0, right? Let's look at an example where I have 1 to the, one to the infinity. Uh, should I move on? You need time to write it down? Okay. Okay, so the next problem is, uh, I might have accidentally uh, deleted some problem here. Okay, let's just do this proper problem. I have the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus x to the 1 over x. And what's the limit form here? Here x is going to infinity, right? So if x is going to infinity, 
what's the limit of the base? The limit of the base is uh, infinity and the exponent is 1 over x, x is going to infinity, so 1 over x goes to 0. So the, uh, so the limit of the exponent is 0. So I have infinity to the 0. And that's an indeterminate form. So what's the limit? Well, we are going to rewrite 1 plus x to the 1 over x as e to the the same exponent multiplied by ln of the base. So I get 1 over x ln of 1 plus x. Now we are going to take the limit. We are going to take the limit as x goes to infinity of uh, ln. So what is, the, uh, what is the exponent there? The exponent is ln of 1 plus x divided by x there, right? You agree? The limit, uh, the, the exponent there is ln of 1 plus x divided by x. So what's the limit form here? As x goes to infinity, uh, ln of 1 plus x goes to infinity. As x goes to infinity, the denominator x goes to infinity. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule. And if I apply L'Hopital's rule, what am I getting? We are getting x going to infinity. What's the derivative of ln of 1 plus x? That's 1 over 1 plus x. What's the derivative of x? That's 1. So I get the limit as x goes to infinity, 1 over 1 plus x, which is 0. So what's the limit here? What's the original limit then? The original limit would be the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the power 1 over x ln of 1 plus x. We found out that the limit of the exponent is 0, so I get e to the 0, and e to the 0 is what? Any questions on that example? Any questions at all? Okay, um, if you're done writing it down, uh, I want to use a different writing style for this problem. So what we did is fine, uh, but I want to write the problem in a little bit, solution in a little bit different way, because sometimes pe people prefer uh, the other way. So uh, I will show you the other way. So this is how I usually do it. Uh, but I shouldn't be biased about other ways, so uh, other ways or other writing styles for the same solution. Uh, so I am going to show you the other style that people use. Um, uh, I mean, uh, substance-wise, there isn't a difference, but uh, uh, let me show you what, what other people would do. Other people would say, let, let y be 1 plus x to the 1 over x. And then what would be our goal? What's our goal then? The goal is to find the limit as x goes to infinity of y then, right? Well, now I'm going to take ln of y. So if I take log of both sides, I get 1 over x ln of 1 plus x. And so then, so then I could say that the limit as x goes to infinity, ln of y is the same as the limit as x goes to infinity, ln of 1 plus x over x. And we found, we found a few minutes ago by using the L'Hopital's rule, da da da, we got that the, uh, the limit for this guy is zero. So that tells me that the limit of ln of y is zero. So then what's the limit of y? That's what I need to, needed to find. The limit of y, well, anytime I have y, I can rewrite it as e to the ln of y, you agree? e to the ln of y, remember e and ln, they, they, they cancel out each other because they are the inverses of each other, right? So e ln of y would be y. Now I know that the exponent has limit 0, so I get e to the 0, and I get 1. 
which writing style is better? I don't think there is a better one. I just think that there is a choice and you can make a choice. Uh, substance wise, I don't think there is any difference. Uh, uh, you cannot, you can't really say one of them is uh, is uh, is uh, uh, is a more clever solution than the other one. They are about the same, and but uh, the writing style is is a little bit different. Okay. How many of you have seen L'Hopital's rule before that you used this way rather than the other way? No. Okay. All right, so uh, any questions on that problem? Okay, uh, let me now move on to two more problems that I want to do. Uh, there is a reason why I want to do them because we need, need this, need to be able to understand these types of limits in chapter 11. Uh, this limit is uh, taking the limit of ln of x divided by x to the k and where I am assuming that k is uh, a positive real number. So k is a positive real number. Uh, so k could be uh, k could be 2, k could be 1, k, k could be half, k could be a million, k could be a billion, a trillion, k could be whatever number you want it to be, as long as it's positive, k could be 0. 0.0001, okay? Am I making sense? K is a positive real number, that's all I'm saying. It's a fixed positive real number. And I claim that this limit is zero. I claim that this limit is zero. And what's the significance of this limit? Well, what this is saying is basically that the log function is smaller than, smaller than any polynomial function. The log function is less than any uh, power of any power of x. So x squared is x is bigger than log x. X to the half is bigger than log x. X cubed is bigger than log x. Right? Any power of x is bigger than log. Now I have to be a little bit careful uh, when I when I say that uh, x to the half is bigger than log x. Uh, be, because x is going to infinity, I don't really care about negative values of x. In fact, let me just uh, think about. Uh, from 1 to infinity. So let's say 1 is here and then this direction is uh, we're going from 1 to infinity and so maybe there is a finite interval from 1 to some number star okay there might be a finite interval between 1 and some number where where log x where log x may be bigger than x to the k okay however there will be a point star after that, after that x to the k will be always bigger than ln of x. So initially, for a finite interval, maybe ln of x is bigger, but after some point on, as x goes to infinity, after some point on, uh, the, uh, the power of x is always bigger than the log function. Am I making sense? So in computer science or electrical engineering, they sometimes talk about algorithms and analysis of algorithms, right? And, and if you have an algorithm that, that has polynomial time versus, uh, versus an algorithm where uh, algorithm which, has, which, which can be completed in log time, right? Which, which would be better? Well, if you have an algorithm which has log time, it's much better than something which has a polynomial time. Uh, so the significance of that limit is that any power of x is eventually bigger than the log function, no matter how small the exponent is, as long as it's positive. Okay, x to the power point 100 zeros and then 1 is eventually bigger than the log function. So that means in particular any polynomial function is going to be bigger than the log function. Am I making sense? Okay, so now the question is, how would, I, how would I find this limit, right? So let's try to find this limit. Um, first of all, I want to show that it's, uh, it's zero. And then but before I do anything else, what's the limit form here? What's the limit form? As x goes to infinity, uh, ln of x goes to infinity. And then because the exponent k is positive, the denominator is also going to infinity. 
So I can apply the L'Hopital's rule. If I apply L'Hopital's rule, log of x is 1 over x. Uh, what's the derivative of x to the k? That's k times x to the k minus 1 by the power rule. So now I have to do some algebra to simplify this. So I get the limit as x goes to infinity. Um, this would be 1 over k x to the k minus 1. And notice that the 1 over x that I have on top, I can bring down the x in the denominator like this, right? You agree? Everybody's okay? Alright, so what do I have then? I have the limit as x goes to infinity, 1 over k, x to the k. Remember k is a fixed constant, right? So what's the limit? What's the limit? Well, as x goes to infinity, what is happening to the denominator? As x goes to infinity, the denominator is becoming big or small? Big, because k is a positive exponent, right? So this is a becoming a zero, right? You, you are okay with that? The denominator is becoming big, so you're getting zero. Okay, so that's what happening with this uh, limit. I want to show you one more limit, which is a little bit more uh, work is involved. Here, I am taking the limit of the exponential function divided by the uh, polynomial function. But this time, I am get, I'm going to get infinity. So what does that imply? Well, it implies that the exponential function is larger than any power of x. So in particular, the exponential function is larger than any polynomial function. If you take x to the a billion, still it's smaller than the exponential function. Of course, once again, once again, uh, at, uh, there might be a finite interval between one and some number where uh, the exponential is smaller than the polynomial, but then afterwards, uh, afterwards the exponential will dominate the polynomial. So eventually, the exponential will dominate the uh, polynomial. So you're looking at as x goes to infinity. So at some point on the real number line, after some point on, the exponential dominates the polynomial. Okay. So uh, how do I sh how do I so again uh, in computer science people talk about exponential time algorithm versus polynomial time algorithm. Well, which one would you prefer? Would you you, you prefer polynomial time, right? Uh, exponential. If you have a algorithm where you have exponential time, you will be depressed about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yes, right here. Okay, so now, how do I compute this limit though? Uh, here, remember, k is, a, k is any positive real number. But I don't want to work with any real positive real number. Instead, I want k to be a positive integer. If that, that, if that was the case, then I can easily use L'Hopital's rule and come up with what the limit is. So instead of working with k, I want to uh, I want to do the following. Uh, I want to choose a positive integer which is bigger than k. So let's find whatever k is, right? Let's say k is a 50. If k is, a, let's say k is 50.139. Well, then I can use n to be uh, 51. So all I'm saying is that choose a positive integer n which is bigger than k. Well, then what can I say? I could say that x to the k is less than x to the n, right? If, if n is bigger than k, then x to the k would be less than x to the n. Now, this is true as long as I have x is greater than 1. Uh, why can I assume x is greater than 1? Because we are looking at the limit as x goes to infinity, so x is big, so certainly x is bigger than 1. When x is bigger than 1, this inequality will hold. Right? It's like saying x squared, uh, it's like saying x to the 2.5 is less than x cubed, right? It's like saying x to the 5.5 is less than x to the 6. Does that make any sense? So x to the k is less than x to the n, and then what is that 1 over x to the k? 
1 over x to the k will then be bigger than 1 over x to the n. Why bigger? If you take the reciprocal, then the inequality sign will be uh, reversed. Finally, uh, I can say that e to the x divides, so multiply by, multiply by e to the x, then you get e to the x over x to the k is larger than e to the x over x to the n. Remember, this is the original, uh, this, is, this guy here is the original function I have in my limit. I'm saying that is bigger than what? It is bigger than this, where n is a positive integer. Now think about this, if I show, if I show that this guy goes to infinity, would it show that the, uh, that the uh, function within the blue circle will go to infinity? Well yes, the, the function in the blue circle is bigger than the function in the red circle. So if the, red, the function in the red circle becomes big, well the left hand side is even bigger, right? If this guy is big, if the right hand side is big, then the left hand side is even bigger, right? So if the right hand side goes to infinity, then the left hand side will also go to infinity. Am I making sense? We have to be able to understand these type of things in chapter 11. Okay? So, uh, once again, uh, the conclusion here is that e to the x over x to the k, the original function in the limit, is bigger than e to the x over x to the n, where n is a positive integer bigger than k. Now finally, I'm going to compute the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x divided by x to the n. So how would I compute that limit? Uh, I don't know why I have that uh, graph there, but let me go down. Um, okay, so here's the, here's the uh, I think somebody came by my office and I worked on it with him or something. The limit as x goes to infinity, e to the x over x to the n. This is the limit I want to compute. Okay, so uh, can I apply L'Hopital's rule? Uh, maybe I should mention that first. What's the limit form? e to the x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. x to the n will go to infinity as x goes to infinity. So I have the correct form to apply L'Hopital's rule. So I could say the limit as x goes to infinity. Uh, I take the derivative of the uh, numerator, it doesn't change, right? And I take the derivative of the denominator, I get n x to the n minus 1. So this is the first time I, am, I have applied L'Hopital's rule, right? Now, what, now what's the limit form? Now what's the limit form? The limit form is still infinity over infinity, right? You agree? n is some positive integer uh, bigger than 1. Uh, maybe I should have emphasized that. Uh, choose a positive integer and bigger than 1, okay? So uh, now I have this. The first time I applied L'Hopital's rule, this is what I get. Now I can apply L'Hopital's rule again. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule again. Uh, when I take the derivative of the numerator, it doesn't change. And I take the derivative of the denominator, I'm going to get now n, n minus 1, x to the n minus 2. And this is the second time I applied L'Hopital's rule. Still the form, still the form would be infinity over infinity, right? Okay. So how many times uh, should I apply L'Hopital's rule, do you think? How many times should I apply L'Hopital's rule? Well, un until I get x to the power 0, in the denominator, right? Until I get to x to the power 0. So I am going to say, I don't know what n is, but I'm just going to say dot, 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 uh, which is, uh, uh, I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. How many times do you think I have to apply L'Hopital's rule to get x to the 0? n times, right? So I am going to apply L'Hopital's rule the nth time the good thing is the numerator doesn't change. Um, the problem is I need to realize what's, what I'm getting in the 
um, what am I going to get uh, at the end and when I get ex get to actually the zero? This is the nth time I applied uh, Lobotel's rule. So when I get to x to the zero, what is the uh, what is the uh, uh, near what is the coefficient right by it? What number do I have here? So what number do I get here when I get to x to the zero? One. Why? Well, notice when you when you look at the uh, when when you applied L'Hopital's rule the first time. Uh, if the exponent is, uh, whatever the exponent on x is, the coefficient by it, the, the last coefficient by it is 1 more than that. Second time you apply L'Hopital's rule, the exponent on x is n minus 2, and the, uh, and the uh, coefficient right by it is 1 bigger than that, right? So if you look at, if you get the exponent 0, then the coefficient right by it would be 1 bigger than that, which, which would be 1. And so uh, x to the 0 is just 1, so I don't even need to write that. So now is it clear what the limit is? Well, let me write one more line here, just to... Uh, um, let me keep that x to the 0, and... Here, uh, I'm going to write n factorial. So what is the meaning of n factorial? Well, Gia must know. What is n factorial? <laughs> you guys have seen this? Yeah, so you guys have seen this in a stat, right? So you multiply... Right. You multiply all the positive integers, all the all the positive integers from one up to n, right? All the positive integers from one up to n. We're going to use that factorial notation a whole lot in ch in chapter eleven. So now we know that the limit should be infinity, right? N factorial, whatever that is, is a fixed number. You're taking the limit as x goes to infinity to the x goes to infinity, so you get infinity. So the, the, the takeaway uh, uh, message here is that e to the x is much larger than any power of x. Okay? And any power of x is much larger than the log function. Uh, let me ask you this. Suppose in your homework you see a problem like this. e to the 2x divided by x to the 7. What would be the limit as x goes to infinity? What would be the limit? Infinity, right? Now, how many times would you have to apply L'Hopital's rule here? Seven times? Would you want to apply L'Hopital's rule seven times? Uh, so, uh, one way to get around this, that uh, tedious work is to say that, okay, I have... Uh, uh, this limit, all I'm going to say is that I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule seven times until I, I get uh, x to the zero in the denominator, right? So let, let's just say you're going to apply L'Hopital's rule seven times. So, and then I'm going to get some constant in the denominator times x to the zero. And in the numerator, when I take the derivative of e to the 2x, I'm going to get e to the 2x, but I'm going to get 2 every time, right? I'm going, to get, I'm going to keep getting 2, 2, 2. So whatever that is, I don't care. I just, some constant there. Right? So I have e to the 2x essentially there, right? So the limit would be infinity. If I care to know star and double star, I, I can, right? What would, be, what would be star? Star will be in fact what? I mean, I, I don't really need to know a star and double star to, to come up with this limit, but I can tell you what that is. Star would be 7 factorial, right? And what would be double star? You're taking the derivative 7 times. Each time you're going to get a factor of 2, right? So how many factors of 2 will you get? You're going to get 2 to the 7. Right? 
Again, you don't need to write that to find out the limit, right? But that's the pattern you're going to get if you keep getting, if you keep taking the uh, derivative, right? Is that making sense? That, that it is what I'm saying is that if I am taking the seventh order derivative, if I'm taking the seventh order derivative of uh, e to the two x, what I'm saying is that you're getting two to the power seven times e to the two x seven times. Each time you're going to get a factor of two, so seven times will give you seven factors of two. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, um, uh, formally I'm done with uh, 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 L'Hopital's rule. Now, do you guys have any questions from anything from homework? If you don't, then I'm going to do some pr homework types of problems from uh, uh, some, well, I'm going to do problems very similar to your web assigned homework problem, yeah. Uh, I haven't really uh, looked into that. Uh, you'll, you'll get an email from me uh, by the end of today. The exam would be next week on uh, Friday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which section is it? L'Hopital's rule. Yeah. What is number eight? Limit as x goes to zero. Limit as x goes to zero. Go ahead. Five x. Yeah. Minus. Sine of five x. Sine of five x. Over five x. Minus tangent of five x. Minus uh, tangent of five x. Yeah. Would you mind if I change five to a six? Uh, the reason I'm changing so that she has to do it, right? Okay. Tangent of 6x, right? Okay, so 6x minus sine 6x over 6x minus tangent 6x. What's the limit form? As x goes to 0, what is sine 0? Sine 0 is 0, so you get 6, 0 t minus sine 0, right? So you get 0 here. Similarly, you get 0 in the denominator because tangent 0 is 0. So because of that, I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And if I apply L'Hopital's rule, uh, 6x, uh, uh, will the derivative would be what? 6 minus, what's the derivative of sine 6x? It will be 6 cosine 6x, right? Uh, divided by, here I'm going to get 6 minus, uh, what's the derivative of tangent? It will be secant squared of 6x multiplied with 6, right? So that's the derivative. Uh, at this point, at this point, let's check the uh, 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 form again. What's the limit now? Well, the limit of the numerator is 6 minus 6 times cosine 0, right? What is cosine 0? 1, so I'm still getting 0 here. Oh, secant 0 is the same as cosine 0, so this would be 0 as well. I still have 0 over 0. Should I apply L'Hopital's rule again? Uh, let's apply, let's apply L'Hopital's rule. Um, if I apply L'Hopital's rule, I am going to get, uh, this time what am I getting? What's the derivative of cosine? Uh, I'm going to get negative 6 and the derivative of cosine 6 will be negative sine 6x, another 6, right? So what will that be? 36 uh, sine 6x, you agree? And then what's the derivative in the denominator? Uh, you're getting a negative 6 there. Uh, is derivative of secant squared would be what? 2 secant 6x uh, multiplied by what? The derivative of secant x, which is what? Secant 6x tangent 6x. Let's see if you agree with that uh, uh, derivative. Another 6, yeah, so you're going to get 36. Yep, thank you. Okay, so that's the derivative, and... 
we have to simplify a couple of things here. Let's uh, uh, get rid of that 36 there. And let's re rewrite this as x goes to 0 sine 6x over, there is a negative sign, let's keep that, uh, 2 secant squared of 6x tangent of 6x. Now what should I do? Uh, what's the form now? The form is still 0 divided by 0, right? You agree? However, this time I, I'm actually not going to apply L'Hopital's rule. Why? Because potentially I see something here. If you look at tangent 6x and sine 6x, tangent is sine over cosine. So you can actually cancel out uh, sine 6x. Am I making sense? So I think if I do that, then I might be getting something better. Because right now, if I want to take the derivative of the denominator, you can see that it's not going to be pretty. Right? So let me just uh, do the following then. I am going to rewrite this uh, function, uh, which would be uh, uh, negative sine 6x. Uh, I, well, let me write negative half here, okay? Now, can someone s tell me if it is valid to write 1 over secant squared? Um, is it okay to write cosine squared for that? 1 over secant squared? And 1 over tangent that I have, can I say cotangent of, sorry, 6x? Cotangent of 6x. Is that okay? Now finally, I'm going to turn, ev turn everything in terms of uh, sine and cosine. Negative half sine 6x uh, cosine squared of 6x sine 6x over cosine 6x. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. What did I do wrong? Well, I should be writing what? Cosine 6x over sine 6x. Now I can cancel out the sine 6x now notice that uh, I have cosine squared and cosine, which is okay because well, because what is cosine zero? So I get a one here, one here. Uh, well, I should be saying I get a one squared here, one there, but at the end, what do I, what do I get? Negative half. So I didn't have to apply L'Hopital's rule anymore. <coughs> okay. What? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah, so this is a little bit more difficult uh, application of L'Hopital's rule. But again, remember what I keep telling you that uh, when you don't have any clue when involved, with something involving trig functions, always write everything in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, and see if you can simplify things. Any questions at all? Well, uh, have a good Easter break and uh, don't forget to go over the homework, okay?